Previously, we've learned that we can multiply these T matrices as a linear combination of the columns of the first matrix. When we multiply this matrix to this one, we're going to obtain a matrix which is going to be T by T, or basically it will have T columns. And we are going to obtain each of the columns of the resulting matrix by com combining these T columns of the first matrix with the numbers from this matrix. So basically the first column of the resulting matrix it's going to be equal to vector 1 t multiplied as a 1 plus 3 and 4 multiplied to this one. So basically I need to just multiply this whole matrix, the first matrix, to this column and what I would like to obtain this is going to be 4 and 6. So this is going to be the first column of the resulting matrix, 4 and 6. And when I multiply the whole matrix to the second column, so I can do this in the same way by combining the first column with the tier and the second column was the 1. We can obtain this as a 5 and 8 and this is going to be the second column of the resulting matrix. So basically when we multiply the matrix to the another one we can multiply the whole matrix to each of the columns and this is going to be the columns of the resulting matrix. At the same time previously we've learned that we can solve many system of linear equations, basically k system of linear equations, at the same time by creating one augmented matrix by putting all, uh, so one um, coefficient matrix to here and all the right hand side part just after this and by applying the gauss jordan elimination we can bring this matrix as a reduced row echelon form and the last k columns of this reduced row echelon form is going to tell us what is the solution for all the systems at the same time so basically solutions vector for this one this one this one and so on. So now let's say we're given some matrix which is T by T and we would like to find its inverse. So in order to do this, so we should remember the definition of the inverse matrices. So the inverse matrix A inverse should be also in the same dimension. So basically it should have column 1 and column 2 so that if I multiply the A to its inverse we need to obtain the identity matrix. So basically 1, 0, and 0, 1. So let us multiply this matrix A to this A inverse column by column. Basically, if I multiply this matrix A 1, 2, 3, 5 to the first column of the A inverse, so we're going to obtain one column, which is going to be the first column of the resulting matrix. Basically, it is going to be 1 and 0. Right? If I multiply this matrix A, 1, 2, 3, and 5, to the second column of the A inverse, what we can obtain is the second of the column of the resulting matrix, which is already given 0 and 1. So please note that I've got a system of linear equations here, A, X is equal to the B, or B1, where A and B1 are given, and I need to find this vector X. And at the same time, I'm given a x is equal to the bt, where a and b t are given, and I need to find this vector x. So in order to do this, we need to create the augmented matrix by putting the a, b1, and b2. So this is going to be, in our case, 1, 2, 3, 5. And just after this, we need to put the b1, which is going to be 1 and 0. Then the b2, which is going to be 0 and 1. So basically, in order to find the... Then we need to bring this matrix as a reduced ratio in form. And the last two columns of the resulting... Uh, re, uh, resulting reduced row echelon form is going to tell us what is the this vector c1 which is going to be the first column of the inverse and what is going to be this vector c2 which is going to be the second column of the inverse. So let's do this. So we need to choose this one as the pivot and we need to eliminate this 3. In order to do this we multiply the first row to the minus 3 and add this to the second. So in this case, we're not going to change the first row, and we have to multiply all these four elements of the first row to the minus 3 and add this to the second. That is going to be 0 here, minus 1, minus 3, and 1. So now we need to choose this element, minus 1, as a pivot. So in order to make this leading one, we need to multiply the second row to the minus 1. So it becomes now 1, 2, 1, 0, 
0, 1, 3, and minus 1. So now in order to bring this as a reduced social form, we need to get rid of this T, so that these two columns should have only the pivots and zeros everywhere else. So we multiply the second row now to the minus T and add this to the first row. And please note that the second row is not going to be changed. And the first row is going to be 1, 0, minus 6 plus 5, it's going to be minus 5, and 2. So this column is going to be the solution for the first system, or basically it is going to be the first column of the inverse. And this column is going to be the solution for the second system. Basically it is going to be the solution for the second system. Or basically this matrix here is going to be the inverse of our matrix. So we can quickly check this. So hey, if our matrix A is, is given as a 1, 2, 3, and 5, then its inverse is going to be equal to minus 5, 2, 3, and minus 1. So we can check whether these two matrices are inverses by multiplying them. So the first row multiplied to the first column is going to be equal to 1. The first row to the second column is 0. Second row to the first column is 0. Second row to the second column is going to be equal to the 1. And indeed, if these two matrices are the inverses. So in general, we can write down the algorithm in this way. So if you're given a matrix A, which is a square invertible matrix, Then the first step, what we have to do is we need to create the augmented matrix by putting the matrix A and the identity, right? So we are creating this matrix A and the identity because the columns of the identity matrix are the right-hand side parts of the system of linear equations which we have to solve. Then in the next step, in the second step, we need to apply the gauss jordan elimination to bring this matrix to the form where we'll have the identity matrix now in the left-hand side. And just after the identity matrix, we're going to have the matrix, which is going to be the inverse of this A. So this algorithm works for any dimensional matrices. So the only thing which we have to check is whether the matrix is invertible or not.